Well, welcome to the Moving Picture Studio. We're here with Rob Lowe and Thomas Jane for our Melt With You. Firstly, congratulations on the film and the fact that it got sold today. Uh, big news ahead of the screening tonight as well. What does it mean to have the film accepted into Sundance and come up here when it seems like it was such a, a personal project that you guys were all able to pitch in on? Well, it's, it's, it's I think, the perfect Sundance movie because it harkens back to what Sundance originally was and continues to be, which is celebrating provocative movies that don't necessarily fit in the marketplace. There was a home for them in that place with Sundance. Independent and spirit. It's independent, and that's what this movie is. This movie is meant to be provocative, it's meant to be divisive, it's meant to have people who love it and hate it, it's meant to provoke talk in a time when movies every year are safer and safer and safer. True. Thomas, I mean, you're wearing the hat with the British, the Union Jack on it. Johnny Rotten comes in and out of the film at certain times. There's uh, a punk rock romance to the movie that attracted me from the very beginning, being an old punk rocker. And uh, I bought this, I've had this hat for years. I bought it in Little Tokyo, and I wore it in honor of our, uh, our little punk rock romantic uh, guy movie. And you wear it well. <laughs> Obviously, Mark's a big music guy. How much of that music and that image, imagery that, uh, that comes with his territory did you know was going to be in this film? Well, we played the music while we were filming, you know. So we had music going all the time. And it really, you know, got us into the spirit. Um, I know Rob used to listen to a lot of that stuff. I did, too. You know, a lot of the new wave type stuff and the post-punk uh, stuff from the early 80s. and all, You know, I mean, that's, to tell you the truth, where all the great music that's remembered today, as yeah. far as I'm concerned, you know, all that stuff they were playing on the radio is gone. Yeah. But the stuff that we used to listen to is all still there, man. Yeah, we'd, we'd crank it up, we'd start a scene, and I would be transported mm. yeah. back to, you know, 20 years, It's so visceral. Years. Oh, Music's man. like smells, you know. It's yeah. so vis It reminds you of where you were at a place in time. It's so visceral, and it really it flavored our performances. Yeah. Did you sit down with Mark in a cafe first? Like, what was that first meeting like? He was he was the first man in the pool. Mm, yeah, he came over to my house, and I'd read the script, and uh, we sat and you know told told our stories and uh, our personal sort of relationship to the movie, and uh, and it was time to make the movie, you know. And Mark had other movies that he was up for, and big studio stuff, and. I, I really encouraged him to um, to put that aside and say, you know, let's seize this moment because we don't, it might not come again, you know, come in a year, or, you know, but w let's take a month and and do it, you know, and I and I and he did because this kind of writing and this kind of story, this it's, it's getting harder and harder to find this kind of stuff. And probably rarest of all that you get a chance to shoot it in chronological order and actually have that development of character. How the last movie I shot in chronological order was for Francis Ford Coppola. It was The Outsiders, and it was my first movie. Right. Oh, you're great in that, by the way. You know those deleted scenes that are. Did you see those? Fucking man? brilliant. Oh, thanks, man. man. I mean. Fucking amazing Thank stuff. You. Thank was, you. That must have been heartbreaking to that stuff taken out of the movie because you're fucking phenomenal. Literally, I've, I've written a memoir that's coming out in, in May, and one of the big, big set pieces in the book is me seeing The Outsiders for the first time and no one telling me yeah. that 80% of my role had been cut. I did that. I, mean, I and Terry Malick did that to uh, Coppola and Brody. Malick. What is it with those hacks? Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with us? Didn't people? tell Bruce. Didn't, didn't tell yeah. Adrian, and, and he took his family to the premiere. And, and, oh, you know, man. and, I, and I always thought that I sucked. I thought, well, that's why they're gone. I'm terrible, clearly. And then I'm 40 years old. Francis wants to re-release the 25th anniversary of The Outsiders and put all the footage back. It's a better movie. And I see it. And the and movie was great, like, but it's a better movie. It's yeah, so, so cool. Too. It's so cool to see. I'm oh, sorry, we've totally digressed, but thank you.